Hey again again. Oh, sorry. Well, hello. We're back on the president again. Uh, we've had a little problem since we since we got it with um, like a, a a shake on the on the brakes when you put your foot in the pedal. Now, could be a, a, a couple of things. I know that the guy that had it before me has did a bit of work on the brakes because he uh, complained a fair bit about how much money he spent on that too. But um, it's got all new pads in it. It's got nice new, like everything's sort of new. Uh, mass cylinder looks really good. Uh, it's got new brake pads in it. The fluid's nice and clean. You still might give it a bit of a bleed. The problem is, as far as I can see, the rotors. The original ones, by the look, they are all rusty down inside the holes there. I've actually, you know, swept a lot of crap off the table already where I've knocked these things apart. Of course, they're not nice, easy ones like your average Nissan, you know, where you just take, take the wheel off uh, move the caliper out of the way and they fall off. No, 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 no. They're actually bolted to the back of the hub. That's the hub there. Uh, that's the, yeah, well, all your bearings are in here. We'll give those a, uh, sorry, we'll give those a repack while we're at it. Um, so you actually have to take all of this off the car. Actually, while we're here, we'll, I'm going to show you the car and what we're dealing with. It's actually got quite a decent rotor on it because, uh, or not a decent brake on it. Uh, it's a two, well, it's, it's a two ton car, so they're track brakes. <laughs> As you can see, there's a twin piston. The uh, rubbers aren't super flash. You can see that this, this car was sitting for a long time. You can see the rust. The thing is, is with it, you know, Nissan being Nissan, they're always common with something. And these ones don't appear to be. I don't know about the calipers. Calipers quite probably, but I cannot find anything else that uses the rotor. And here's the problem. They don't make them anymore. It's quite a small, it's not a huge diameter, and it's vented. So I've, I've found stuff with the same sort of diameter, um, non-vented ones, but this this is a heavy car, right? It's two tons. So we need a vented disc. We need as good a brakes on it as possible. I wonder if it's common to a Chevy or something or other. What I'm gonna do is I will get some, the, the whole point of this exercise here today is to measure everything up, get some dimensions, and then we'll see if we can find somebody uh, either with the right disc rotor or something that we can machine and adapt onto it. I told you I, 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 I like these old cars because I like working on them, didn't I? You know, that, that sort of points to problems up here, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so yeah, but you get, you get thrown all these curveballs, especially with something like this, because there's very few of them in the country. And from doing a bit of research, it turns out these things are hand-built to order. So there's basically no two the same. Um, we've got a little uh, sort of club of people on Facebook um, for the Nissan presidents and the different specifications that these guys have turned these things up. Uh, somebody turned up one the other day that, that was had a bench seat and wind up windows. So <laughs> okay, so that's not very super luxury, but I don't know. Maybe they use it as a taxi. Yeah, I, I suppose it could work as that. Uh, you see a lot of them with the with velour uh, interiors um, and the doilies i've got a full set of doilies for these but you know me being a grubby bugger i um tend not to wear them that's why i wear black so hides the stains plus it's slimming so shut up so um <laughs> it's not working uh, i can i can hear you now all right so this is step one let's see where we can go from here so the next bit is going to be getting all the dimensions and getting on the blower and email and start emailing some people and see what they can come up with i've got a few i've been given the pointers to a few plates for a couple of places that might be able to help i think we'll come up with something that'll do the job um even if we have to machine something up it has to be a five stud and i think that's it's under a 300 millimeter disc yeah more like about 260 odd Roughly, use a proper measuring stick and we'll get it all measured up. I mean, they still work in the meantime. They just like when you, you know, if you're going down a steep hill and you break at the bottom, it's like, aye, 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 aye. yeah, it's a bit like that. But you know, if you're just cruising around, which is what it's designed to do, it's not for, for you know, rally stages. 
there we go from there. All right, wish me luck in the search. All righty, brakes. So, what I did is I got onto Eric at, at uh, Hopper Stoppers um, about this guy here, and he is very helpful actually. Good blokes, Hopper Stoppers, remember the name. Um, the closest one he was able to come up with was this bloke here, which is a T something or rather Magna rotor. Um, there is some differences in, as you can see, the hat height's different. And the OD is different. You can see it there. And the ID is different. Quite, quite a chunk. Yeah, these are heavy. And it doesn't have the five holes because these mount differently. So, but I think that'll do the job. Um, you can see the swept area here, pointer, here goes to there on this disc. Now that there is the same diameter as this here. So, I figure that if we machine the OD down to size and put the five hole and the ID this ID here so it fits on the hub, then all we're going to do is figure out how to make this move or the caliper move eight millimeters. So, as you can see, the, the difference is in the hat height, but like size wise, they're bang on. Um, in the in the hat height here, you can see that's, that that one's quite a bit smaller than this one. So what we need to do is that bolts on like that to the back of the hub and then this guy here holds the disc so at the moment we would be sort of up against that side if you know what I mean you know right up against that side so we can't we've got to get it back that way so I figure actually no it bolts on like a bo bolt <laughs> like that so this bolts onto the, um, the like the knuckle uh, on the back and everything, and this bolts onto the back of the hub. So what we need to do is bring this one this way, and perhaps that one that way. So what I'm thinking of is the the hub itself is really a big solid lump of metal. So I think if we take uh, five millimeters off the back of the hub and move this inwards and then we take three millimeters off the back of here which is basically that distance between there and there we'll be back to where we need to be in the first place and machine that out and bring the OD down and drill the hole the mounting holes in it sound good okay so I reckon that will do the job it's a bit of machining into it, but yeah, I figure if we hop on the lathe and we'll hop on the old mill here and uh, get everything sorted, we should be apples. And I'll have brakes that don't go like that all the time. So, let's get stuck into it. millimeters to go. On the knocker, okay. Time to get the flat bastard out. Well, it's actually not a flat bastard, it's a half round, but here we go. Let's take that edge off so I don't kill myself. ID, next job. Lathe operators take note. The alternative to this, of course, is to get an airline and blow it into somebody else's area so they have to clean it up. <laughs> 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 
But I own the business, so every area is my area. Clean up your crap, guys, because then people will like you as a human being and not as, as Elliot so eloquently puts it, a gronk. Alrighty, so our, we are aiming for 81 millimeters here and our current size is 67. 81 minus 67 equals 14 millimeters. So we've got a seven millimeters out, wow. We now have the same diameter, as you can see, we've got the same ID on the inside. What we need now is those five holes. So, how I figure we're going to do this is we'll stick this in here in the mill and set, it, set this up at zero, because this spins, see? Um, set this up at zero degree wheel and then set this up so this is drilling in exactly the same place as one of those and then we just do uh, 360 divided by 5 is 72 72 degrees so if we go around in, in hits of 72 so 72 uh, 144 200 and something, whatever, um, and drill a hole at each one of those stations, then we should be pretty much bang on. And that is, actually, where's the vernies? 10.1, 10.1, probably 10 mil drill. What's a hole in this thing? 10.63. If we set this up with a 10.5 mil drill on the original rotor, then it should drill the same place. We just picked one of these little things that I just drew on there to give me the same hole. So what I did was, you know, I'm trying to get, this has already got a fair few holes in it, as you can see. So uh, uh, the five stud holes are, which ones? One, two, three, four, five. So I'm not quite sure what those two are for, because that'd be one, two, three, four, but there isn't one down there. So if we go in between somehow and try not to pick up any other holes, which I figured is about there, thereabouts, and drill them there, then we're drilling through meat and all of them and we're not siamesing any of the holes. Sounds like a plan to me. Alrighty, so all we have to do now is pretty up our holes for human consumption. Man, this stuff's hard. It's like hard and brittle. I think that's what's got to be. I suppose they make it out of some it'll be some special brew. All right, so to get it sitting back in the middle, I've got to take a little bit off the hub, five millimeters off the hub, I figure, because there's a big chunk of metal on that one, so there's plenty to take off, and three millimeters off that, and that's the eight millimeters difference in the height, and we can chuck it all back on. And I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna machine that yet. The thinking at the moment is, because of the shape of the thing, you don't want to clamp it down on, it's not a flat surface. So what I'm thinking is if I mount that like that and then run the clamps onto here like this, clamp it all down hard and then machine that like that. We'll try it out with this first and then see how we go. Ew. So the wheel bolts to here. This is not changing, that's not changing, nothing's changing this. If we go with our new disc, which is up here, the difference in the hat height means the disc itself 
moves eight millimeters that way. So we need to get it back to where this one is. So to do that, the plan is to take five millimeters off here and that will move that in. But at the same time, these bolts, um, as you can see, they're flush there at the moment. I'm not using the pointer because my hands are filthy. Brakes are like that. Um, they're flush at the moment. If we go five millimeters, they're gonna stick out above that surface there and that surface is your hub face, which is back of the wheel. So we'll need to machine those off too. So you see the difference there in where these discs are gonna sit from that face against here. So if we do five millimeters here, that'll still give us three millimeters that we're not quite sitting in the right place, right? So then what we do is machine off the back of that. So, put it around the right way. So it'll move it back that other, th that, that three millimeters back to the center. It's a bit Swiss cheese now, doesn't it? I can imagine the headlines now. This will be playing at my, uh, at my obituary, my funeral. Yes, this is the reason that Mark died. A handsome man dies while attempting drifting on mountain pass in Japanese luxury car. <laughs> That's something to be proud of. Okay. All right, let's get this thing off and machine the hub. As you see, there's like, that's just solid metal, so there's plenty there. I don't have to worry about that. Okay, let's get it off. Let's get it on. Come on. Always the last one. All right, hammering and chewing, you don't need to watch that. The disc is off. Be interesting to put them, like, Put them in the lathe and see if they are true against that face. I don't know here would actually do that. It's going to be, I mean, we're about to do that with this. We can't get this in the lathe. We need to machine in here. And we can't get it in the lathe because of the studs. So here we go. Let's knock the studs out. That is not a hammer, Matt. It's a mallet. That's a hammer. We gotta set this one up dead perfect because if we machine that at a bit of an angle, we're exactly back where we started with a wobbly disc. I don't know, maybe we've got oval bearings in the thing. I'm thinking it's the disc. Well, that's interesting. The bit I was going to check whether it's running true or not doesn't run true. <laughs> It took a, bit of, a little bit of mucking around to get it to run true because there was quite a bit of rust on uh, the hub face. So everything's running right now. Alrighty, so what we want, this, we want to take five mil off. So that from there to there is, if I can see it, 21.8. Where are we? 21.8. Now, what I was talking about before, and I was right, see these, how they're above the hub face. So all I'm gonna have to do is put it in the middle and just mill those, the ends of those bolts down. And then it's onto these bits, and then we can put it all back together. Here we are on a new day. How can you tell? Different socks. So, I did a big push last night and I uh, didn't film it because it, like, it was getting dark. I didn't get out of here until I think it was 6.30 or so. But um, there it is folks, it's on the car and I've driven it home and driven it here again and it works. It's a lot of uh, machining and frigging around to do what you're after, to get what you want. Um, is there a better option? I don't know at this stage. There might be. Uh, we'll keep looking for that one. But in the meantime, I've got I've got brakes at work, and they don't go like this every time I uh, put my foot on the brakes, which is good. So we're in business here. Yeah. So both sides done. Um, 
Just this morning actually, as a bit of an aside here, I learned something interesting about the engine in these things. So previously I thought that they'd only been used in two places, which was in these and in the um, C130 uh, Cedric's police cars. Police cars only had the V8 in it, but no, there's one other vehicle that had it in it and it's the Paul Newman um, 280ZX IMSA car, which had a, <laughs> a Y44 in it with two turbos on it. <laughs> so they're also a winning race engine. So there you go. So um, time for me to pack up and uh, we're actually going to give it a little bit of a test uh, this afternoon. I've got to go to my mum's place and to get there I've got to go down below pass which in places is um, one in four so quite steep so yeah with a bit of luck our brakes will hold up so um, for today arrivederci it's gonna give it give it a tub put the wheel back on give it a tub and then away we go so until next time thanks for watching and away we go I'm gonna need some here. Air, I need air.